uh, Spring Security for RESTful application. So we're going to talk about the security options for RESTful applications and uh, we're going to talk about mainly basic authentication on server side as well as client side. Security options for RESTful application. So basic authentication, basically client sends base64 encoded username and password over SSL for each request. And there is another popular security option, which is based on OAuth and is token based. In this code camp, uh, we're going to mostly focus on basic authentication. In the future, we might actually have another session on OAuth. OAuth. Basic authentication. So let's talk about the server side it first. Server side it first. So basic authentication, so traditional authentication approaches like login pages and session identifications are good for web-based clients involving humans. However, uh, in RESTful application, the client is not a human being, right? So it doesn't really fit when communicating with REST clients, okay? So basic authentication provides a solution for this problem, but basically basic authentication client sends basic 64, base 64 encoded credential, meaning username and password for each request using HTTP authentication request header. Uh, so this means it's, this means is that this means that each request is independent of the other request because each request contains user credential and server may and does not maintain any state information on the client, <coughs> which is good for scalability point of view because the server does not have to maintain uh, the uh, kind of cookie based client security credentials. Okay, because a client always sends the uh, uh, credential on each request. Uh, in general, when you're using basic authentication, you should use, you must use SSL because base64 encoded credential, such as password, is very easy to decode. So you must use SSL if you are planning to use basic authentication. Okay, so how are you going to configure the server side, the Spring server side? Uh, just like a Spring MVC application, you are going to include enable web security annotation uh, on your configuration file, configuration uh, the uh, class, and the configuration class extends web security configurer adapter. Okay? And one way that you can uh, have in-memory user credentials uh, is using the, uh, the uh, in-memory authentication uh, scheme. So here, configure global security, you're going to receive authentication manager build object. Uh, and using that build object, you can call in-memory authentication. And then you can actually set in-memory user and uh, user credentials. So in this case, we are adding two users, user one and user two with password of user one and user two, and they belong to user role. And uh, then we have someone uh, who has a password of someone and, uh, and uh, someone belongs to someone role. And then we have an admin and super uh, admin user. Uh, each of those, each user, uh, each of those uh, belong to admin and uh, then a super admin. Super admin, in fact, belongs to not only an admin, but also super admin. So this is a way that you can have uh, basically test user credentials in your uh, server side. Okay? And in, in general, you want to use more robust uh, the credential management uh, systems such as a database and the LDAP server and things like that. But here we are using in memory uh, the, uh, the credential storage uh, just for the testing purpose. Okay, now, once you got that the uh, in-memory uh, user credentials and you can configure uh, your uh, REST for uh, the other uh, services, okay? So here, you are going to uh, receive HTTP security object uh, and you're gonna call it HTTP. And first thing you're gonna do is you're going to actually disable CSRF, okay? We're gonna actually talk about why you can disable the CSRF. That's mainly for browser clients. Uh, since we are not really using browser clients, uh, we don't have to actually have a CSRF uh, the, uh, enabled. Okay? And then authorized request. So that's where you can actually set the access control. Okay? So uh, in this case, the add ant matchers and uh, for any get operation accessing these customers uh, has to be in the role of user. 
And here are uh, the, uh, you know, when you are posting uh, to resources customers, meaning you are going to add a new customer, uh, has to be done either admin role or super admin role. Uh, same thing for put. And for delete, it has to be a super admin role. So in this case, you can actually set it up in a way that uh, read operation can be done by user. Uh, the uh, put and delete, I'm sorry, the uh, post and delete, uh, post and update. Uh, meaning creation and update can be done by uh, admin or super admin. Uh, delete can be done only by uh, super admin. Okay, so basically by calling authorized authorized request method with end matches, you set up the access control. And then HTTP basic method will actually set that you are using HTTP basic, uh, basic authentication scheme. Okay, one thing that is noticeable over here is that the get base authentication endpoint yeah so basically authentication entry point and get basic authentication entry point uh, we're going to actually talk about why this is needed uh, in the following slide and then session management you don't really have to actually maintain the session here uh, because the client always send the uh, the state including uh, user credentials so yeah this is a bit of repeat of what i just talked about in the previous slide csrf there is no need to enable csrf because uh, yeah, it is a REST operation. It's not being used by the browser client. Okay, so each request in fact contains the header that contains base64 user credentials. So there is no possibility of CSRF uh, the uh, tag. Uh, basic authentication configure authentication entry point with a basic authentication entry point. So the reason that we need this basic authentication entry point is that if authentication fails, we do not want to actually redirect into login page or something like that, which is typically for MBC application for human users, right? Instead, you, you want to return 401 uh, response, okay? Uh, so that's what we want to do. So, you know, that is what this basic authentication entry point is all about. So if you go over here, uh, it, you know, when you call get basic authentication entry point, it will actually return the type of basic authentication entry point and uh, that just contains uh, a method in which it will construct a full on status, uh, the response status and actually send back to the client. Uh, session creation, uh, stateless is no session will be created and used by Spring Security. So we don't have to use a cookies and things like that. So it works well with the authentication mechanism such as a basic and digest authentication for REST uh, applications uh, because we don't really have to maintain any state. Okay, so that is a server side, uh, pretty straightforward. Now let's take a look at the client side. Uh, client side, uh, you know, there is actually a class called the HTTP authentication feature class. This is in fact the, from Glassfish community. Uh, it features HTTP basic and digest a client authentication scheme based on uh, RFC uh, 2617. So it supports multiple schemes, a basic preemptive authentication, basic non-preemptive authentication, digest authentication, and universal uh, authentication. So basic non-preemptive authentication is that authentication information is sent always with each HTTP request. Okay. Now, basic non-preemptive authentication, however, is that authentication information will be added only when the server refuses the request with a 4.1 status code, okay? And that is basically the scheme that we're gonna actually uh, experiment in our hands-on lab. So when you actually, when the client was tried to access the data that is secured, uh, the server will send back 4.1 status code. And then client will actually set the basic authentication credentials in the authorization uh, authentication uh, request header, and then uh, it will be authenticated, okay? Uh, and uh, this mode is this mode. This non-preemptive authentication has negative impact on performance. Uh, advantage is that it does not send credentials when they are when they are not needed. So you know, basically, it's uh, uh, the performance versus convenience uh, the uh, the uh, uh, trade-off, right? Uh, and digest does not require the usage of SSL because password is never sent over the network. Universal is basically a combination of digest and uh, the uh, uh, basic authentication. So here we're going to actually try with a basic non-preemptive non authentication uh, scheme in our hands on that. 
Okay, oh yeah, so this is a little bit of a peel. I should actually move this slide 12. Okay, so this is the client side code. So you are going to have a HTTP authentication feature class, and then you're gonna call basic builder. It will be turned builder object. Then you can set non-preemptive. So you're actually using non-preemptive basic authentication. Then you call credentials method to set up your user credential, username and password, and then uh, build. So what it returns is the uh, HTTP authentication feature object. And from that point on, it's pretty much the same as the regular client code. Okay, so you got the, uh, uh, yeah, so, oh, these two lines are actually a little bit different, right? So uh, we are going to have a client configuration object, and client configuration object, we are going to uh, register this feature object, okay? And then uh, when you're creating a client object, you're going to actually provide this configuration object, okay? So in our previous reg client code, you know, basically we create the client object by just calling new client without any uh, argument, right? Uh, and uh, but in this case, you are going to uh, create the client configuration, uh, which actually has the uh, HTTP authentication as a feature, and that needs to be uh, set as an argument when you call a uh, client object. Okay, and then you know, rest of the code is the same. So when you call the request accept get, you know, it's now sending uh, basic authentication username and password uh, in the request header in authentication request header. Okay, so exercise one and two. So let's take a look at the lab documentation. Okay, so we are going to, uh, yeah, so this is very simple uh, client server application. So let's actually try to run a simple server, a Jack Cyrus security simple server application. So let's stop the previous running application and then uh, the uh, uh, yeah, so actually, let me actually explain the code first, and then I'm going to actually demonstrate. So this is the uh, project structure. So if you actually see this guy, you know, you are going to actually have uh, the uh, uh, REST. Uh, here we have a uh, uh, Jersey config file, main application, and server initializer. Then you have a domain class. We have a people class, and we have a person class. Okay. And then we have resources. So we have hello world resource here. Okay, and then we have a security. So here, this is the security, uh, the uh, uh, configuration file. Okay, so we have uh, configured user one, user two, someone, admin, and super admin uh, with various of various roles they belong to. And this is the configuration. We are disabling CSRF. Uh, we are basically setting access control, and uh, and and any request has to be authenticated. And uh, then uh, basic authentication with entry point and the session management is set to stateless. So this is basically what I showed you in the slide, right? Okay. All right, so that's basically what I just showed you. And now this code, uh, you know, the get basic authentication entry point. So that is actually this method. It returns custom basic authentication entry point. In this code, it does implement what is called the commands, okay? So only thing it does is basically when there is a failure, authentication failure, it will actually send back this uh, unauthorized 401 response status. Okay, and we also add this www authenticate uh, information. Okay, uh, and uh, basically that's instead of actually redirecting to login page, you know, we have to send the response uh, with a 401. So that is basically this guy. Get uh, the custom authentication entry point. Uh, the uh, and uh, that's basically uh, what gets uh, you know the uh, registered as an entry point. Okay. All right. Uh, and now we have. Let's take a look at these uh, resources. We have a very simple resource. One is these are all get uh, method. So we have a public, and we have a user, and we have admin uh, URL. So this is the public resource. This is a user resource. This is the admin resource. Okay. Now, if you take a look at the uh, configuration here, okay, so basically public resource should be able to be accessed by everyone, right? However, user resource should be accessible only to user and admin role. And admin resource should be accessible only to admin role. Okay, so that's the way we actually configure it, right? So if you take a look at these resources, and if these resources are accessed, then basically we are just displaying data for public access. And then we are basically calling get credential info as string, uh, passing this header object. 
and this code is basically analyzing the uh, the uh, the uh, 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 this uh, authorization header. Yeah, so this is the head request header that contains user credential. Okay, so in this code. Uh, we are basically get the authorization header and uh, and we're getting the first one okay so you know this one will actually contain basic and space and the base64 encoded username and password right so we're gonna actually get the substring from uh, you know after this basic and then we are going to split with colon so before colon that's gonna be username and after colon is gonna be uh, password so we have a username and password and we are basically constructing username and things like that and return so we you know this is just kind of debugging tool uh, to just show us who has in fact authenticated okay uh, so let's run the application so and then we are going to actually try to use uh, postman uh, to you know play around with this guy all right so let's uh, let's run the application so here we're gonna run and simple security server Java application. And uh, I'm going to yeah, postman here. Okay, so we are going to access uh, the public uh, the uh, resource. So I'm going to click this guy, public resource. And uh, let me just delete all the headers. So I don't need any headers. Okay, and uh, if I click uh, send, uh, it should actually access it, right? Data for public access that is from the public resource. And you know, there is no username and password because nobody has been authenticated, right? So that's what we are actually uh, seeing here. Okay. All right. Now we are going to access uh, user. Okay. Uh, the uh, So let's try to access user. And let's see what happens. Okay. So we got 4.1. Uh, the, uh, you know, access uh, denied. Okay. Uh, error because we are not authenticated ourselves. Right. So that is what we receive. 4.1. Okay. Uh, and you can see this is a 4 one over here as well. Okay, and this is from the message uh, from our entry point, and this uh, status is actually certainly saying uh, 4 one uh, the uh, status. Uh, and uh, same thing with the uh, you know if this user if uh, the uh, if we try to access the admin, we should have the same problem, uh, same unauthorized access 4 one access uh, error. Okay, so that is what we have received. Now we are trying to uh, the uh, send user one and user one uh, credential. Okay, so we're gonna use a basic authentication. So you're gonna click authorization here, and then you are going to select basic auth, basic auth, you know, the authentication here. And here we are gonna use user one and user one, user one, user one, and user one. So user one belongs to user group, right? Okay. And then you are going to call this uh, update request. So when you click the update request, you can see the header, authorization header uh, contains a basic. And then this is the uh, basic 64 of the uh, username and password. In this case, user one and user one. All right. Okay. Now let's try to access, uh, you know, user. Now you should be able to access it because uh, user, oops, uh, bad credentials. And let's just make sure uh, authorization. Yeah, so this is the uh, user one. Oh, yeah, I got the wrong username. Okay, so yeah, I should actually update it. Okay. All right. Now, if I try to uh, the uh, access it, uh, it should be able to access it. So data accessible to user role and uh, the username and password is user one and user one. Okay, so that's cool. Now, if I try to access admin, now we should have uh, you know the uh, four one error because a uh, user role uh, should not uh, be able to access admin. So send it, then you are going to receive. Oh, in this case, what you see is that you are going to actually see four four. Okay, when 
unauthorized user is trying to access, uh, the server actually returns four for not found. Okay, so that's what's happening. So that is what we did. Send, yeah, so you got 404, okay. Now we're gonna actually try to access the uh, admin admin. Uh, the, uh, so right now, right now as a user, one, uh, when you try to access the admin, it returns 404. Now I'm going to uh, change our credential to admin. Admin, admin, and uh, then update. And you can see the the value of the uh, you know this uh, this uh, base sixty four uh, encoded value for admin admin has been changed. Okay, uh, now updated. And then when I send it, now I should be able to access the admin resource. So data accessible admin username and password is admin. All right, so things are working well. Uh, everything is working as expected. Yeah, so this is uh, what we did. Okay. All right, so that is how you are going to do, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, you're going to access using uh, the Postman. Now we can actually run the client application. So let's try to run the client application here. Uh, so I'm going to run the client application, security simple client, run as and job application. And uh, client. Yeah, so what it does is, yeah, so I'm gonna actually use the uh, this lab documentation. So it will try to access the resource using bad credentials, you know, basically uh, incorrect username and incorrect password, and it will receive 4-1, okay, as expected. And then we'll try to access with the user one and user one, right? Uh, so everything worked fine, but when it tried to access the, uh, you know, the uh, resources available to admin, then we got 4-4 error, okay? And, but, you know, this is a message uh, that we have actually said, okay? So this is a little bit disconnect, right? Uh, this is from our message, and this is actually actual status from the server. And then we try as admin admin, then all resources should be accessible to admin because admin belongs to not only in user role, but admin role, okay? So that is a client code. In the client code, uh, we created HTTP authentication feature, and the credential we are using is user bad and user bad. Uh, you know, we don't have this user. Uh, in our uh, in-memory authentication provider, okay? Uh, and then we perform it. And here we are using user one and user one. And then we are going to use uh, admin admin, okay? So pretty much same thing we have done with the uh, Postman. Uh, we are now using client API, okay, to do that. Uh, for your next exercise, I want you to add add special resource with the following code fragment. So we are actually adding another resource that can be accessed with a special. And then I want you to add a special one and special one uh, with a credential of special role and use Postman as a REST client and try to access special resource with the various user credentials such as user one and special one. And also I want you to add code in the client to access a special resource. Okay, okay so that is pretty simple uh, application that has only uh, three resources, uh, you know, public and uh, user and the admin, right? Uh, but it doesn't have any, you know, the uh, creation operation and update operation and things like that. So exercise two, we are going to actually have CRUD operation uh, to be secured, okay? So what we want to do is uh, the, uh, uh, any user can perform HTTP GET operation, meaning any user should be able to actually read the data. However, for create and update operations, uh, which is represented by post and put method respectively. Only admin role user should be able to do it. And uh, for delete operation, uh, only super admin should be able to do it. You know, of course, super admin should be able to do all this uh, and plus delete, right? Okay, so that's basically what we want to actually uh, set things up. So let's actually try, yeah, so this is the uh, structure. Again, we have a security configuration data. Uh, that is pretty much the same user credentials we have. Uh, now, one thing that we have added is now you can actually add, when you are specifying access control, you can also specify the HTTP method. So only user role can actually perform get operation, and admin and super admin can perform uh, the uh, post and put operation. However, only super admin can actually perform delete operation. And rest of the code is the same as a simple case, okay? 
And in the client case, uh, and, and this is basically, you know, the customers, uh, so nothing has been changed. Uh, so what you're going to do is let's explore that application and let's try to use the postman as well. So stop the uh, simple server. Now let's try to run CRUD uh, server, run as in Java applications. Okay, so it's up and running now. Okay, so now we're gonna use Postman here. Okay, all right, so it should be HTTP uh, localhost 8080. Uh, so it should be uh, 8080 resources customers. So here I'm going to say resources customers. Okay, all right, and uh, let's actually remove uh, the header. Uh, so you're gonna just remove the header, okay. Okay, so oh, so now we're gonna actually set the user two user two as the uh, credential. Okay, uh, so we are going to select uh, authorization here. We are going to use user two. You can use user one if you want to, but uh, we just want to actually use a different user. So user one, user two, user two, and update the request. Now, the, uh, if you take a look at the header, authorization header, we now have a basic and then we have a base64 encoded uh, username and password value of user2, okay? Now, when we actually try to send it, now we should be able to actually access, you know, the, uh, uh, the customer data, okay? Because, uh, you know, any user should be able to read. So this is perfectly fine, okay? However, uh, so yeah, we did that. So uh, um, yeah, in this case, uh, we can certainly actually add accept header as well. So in as a default is, yeah, as a default is actually sending in XML, but we don't actually receive an XML. So we are going to add accept and uh, the uh, application JSON. We want to receive the data in the form of JSON. Okay, so send it. Now we should actually receive the data in the form of JSON. Okay, all right, cool. All right, so the user uh, role can access it and you can also actually access the individual uh, customer as well. So if I uh, say one, then the individual, the first customer information is received. So that's cool, okay. All right, so that is what we just did. And now we are gonna actually try to perform post operation. So in a user role cannot perform post operation. So that's not allowed, right? Okay, so what you're going to do is uh, we are going to have, uh, we're going to select the post. Okay, and uh, then uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, let's see. Yesterday I got the same issues. How I, oh, so I have to change this guy first. Yeah, that's the reason. Okay, yeah. Uh, and uh, then select body and uh, so here this is a post operation and you have to actually set the uh, correct URL uh, it should be customers not customer slash one uh, that was the problem I had yesterday as well so in the body here uh, the uh, what we are gonna do is we're gonna actually change uh, yeah so this is for three yeah so yeah basically you know when I try to access send it I got four three so that's expected behavior right uh, I mean, you know, we don't really, uh, the, uh, in this case, we haven't even set the body here yet, but uh, uh, the uh, header yeah, here, uh, so we certainly uh, have not the uh, uh, received, yeah, so it's four, four, three. Now, what we are gonna do is, uh, so content type, okay, so now we are gonna actually add uh, headers, uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, 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 I got the same issues yesterday, so um, this is a post and uh, how can I get to the body of this guy? Yeah, I me. So you should post and resources, customers and uh, body. Oh, okay, so maybe I should actually have this one. Uh, I'm going to post and uh, it's going to be localhost 8080. 
localhost 8080 at resource customers and select the body here uh, and uh, I want to yeah you know what I'm gonna actually get the uh, the first user first and then I'm gonna just use that guy so customers I'm gonna get the first customer and uh, oops uh, get oh no authentication I have to have authentication so I'm gonna have uh, basic authentication and uh, I'm going to yeah so I'm actually still doing user one user two right and user two and the show password yeah so this is the one and update and uh, I'm going to uh, send it and this is the data okay um, yeah so I'm gonna just use the uh, um, XML that's fine uh, and this is what I want to change so I'm going to select uh, post and uh, the uh, this is a oh, post so this one should be customers and uh, I'm going to uh, the uh, body yes oh, okay so yeah I can just use this guy so zip code is one 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 uh, how can I actually set this guy uh, the body raw okay so I can just now do this and uh, here I can change it to one 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 now if I try to post it as user one you should actually return uh, the uh, four three uh, the uh, you know forbidden because the uh, user 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 role cannot actually uh, uh, the create one okay and same thing you know it cannot it I cannot actually perform put operation either right so here if I set one and the send it should actually return four three okay so that's what's expected all right so we got four three right uh, now we are trying to actually perform a post operation or update operation as an admin admin so we are going to uh, authorization so instead of user one I'm gonna use the admin and admin okay and update okay and uh, let's actually try to yeah let's try to put first because uh, you know I already have a put so now if I send the uh, uh, oh unsupported media type yeah, okay so I have to actually set the uh, uh, content type right so I'm gonna set content uh, type and uh, value is uh, was that XML or uh, content type is application uh, JSON and send it oh, maybe it was actually XML okay okay so yeah uh, two or four no content so it worked fine okay all right so if I try to uh, so now let's try to post and this one is going to be customers and uh, again you know the if you take a look at the uh, body here so this is XML right so I'm actually adding new ones so I'm gonna actually add uh, you know this is uh, maybe 88888 and the first name instead of Tom I'm gonna say J fashion and dot com something like that and when I click send it should uh, succeed right so you can see 201 created uh, so it is successful so if I try to get uh, get and all customers then I should have uh, in fact the uh, all uh, this uh, uh, customer so I should have uh, one two three uh, yeah so this is the one that I just added J passion and come so the uh, uh, the admin role can actually update and post however it tried to, when it tried to delete it so let's try to delete it I'm going to delete uh, you know three or something uh, that this uh, third user and then it will uh, fail it will have four three because uh, admin cannot delete a user okay so in this case uh, we are going to actually uh, perform delete operation as uh, the uh, the uh, uh, admin okay so here uh, the uh, uh, this actually uh, okay can I actually get back to uh, delete yeah uh, let's see uh, 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 yeah I want to get back to yeah I want to get back to setting the authentication uh, and the uh, user credentials to admin uh, super admin so how can I get there all right so I'm gonna just create the new one 
Okay, again, uh, it's going to be HTTP uh, localhost uh, resource customers. Uh, and uh, uh, authentication, I'm going to uh, basic authentication. Uh, this time, I'm going to use uh, super admin super admin let's actually make sure that I type it correctly uh, and uh, the okay so now update and uh, then you know let's actually make sure we got the old customers right uh, so send okay so we got all the customers okay now if I want to delete customer 2 uh, as a super user it should succeed so send it and uh, then it's 200 okay so it's successful so if i try to get all customers now we should be able to get only two customers customer one and customer three okay so that worked fine all right uh okay so that is how things work yeah so that's it's delete and uh, so we just did the uh, super admin and we're able to actually delete okay so pretty much what i showed you and uh client application worked pretty much the same you know basically um uh, try with the admin admin so it should be able to display it should be able to create uh, with XML and JSON and the customer the yeah, get should be successful and uh, then uh, it tried to delete a customer it should return 4.3 uh, now at the end we're gonna try with the uh, super admin admin and should be able to delete and the success should be 200 okay all right so your exercise is secure uh, the uh, uh, Jack status orders CRUD server application uh, with you know what you have seen in the customer cross server application. So I want you to be able to actually add all the security features to orders server application, and also I want you to add security uh, checking at the client as well. Okay. So I'm gonna actually give you guys about enough minutes, and uh, and let's have 15 minutes break. So we'll be back at uh, 12. Uh, yeah, right now it's 12.30. We'll be back uh, in 45 minutes. Okay, so we'll be back at uh, 1.15. Okay, uh, let me just make sure that I got the recording.